In example three, we're looking at particle A moving along a horizontal line with velocity V sub A of T. It tells us that the velocity equation, whatever it is that we don't know, it's positive, continuous. Time is measured in seconds. It shows that here in the data table. And velocity is measured in centimeters per second, also given in the table. And these are uh, velocities of particle A at selected times. Question A, use data from the table to approximate the, di to approximate the distance traveled by particle A over the time interval from 0 to 7. How about 0 to 10? And as we can see in the data table, that's what we have here. Time values from 0 to 10. Okay, we're going to approximate the total distance traveled by using a right Riemann sum, and we have to use four rectangles. Show the work that leads to our answer and indicate units of measure. Well, if we were to integrate this rate equation, we would lose the rate of seconds. So I do know that my answer is going to be labeled with centimeters. So the value of this integral is approximately the area in the four rectangles added together. I encourage you to take this manageable number of data points and plot them to get a good illustration um, of how to look at the four rectangles. Okay, real quickly here, I've plotted these points. Okay, these are the data points here. I don't know if the graph is concave up or concave down, okay, but I do know that it's continuous. It might not be differentiable. It doesn't say that it is, but this is just a representation of those data points. Okay, four subintervals, right rectangles. All right, so the first partition would go from zero to two. It's a right rectangle, so on the right hand side, I travel to the curve, travel over, create my rectangle. The next rectangle is three wide. So this is two wide, three wide. The right rectangle determines the height. The next rectangle is two wide. The y value at 7 determines the height, so we're doing a right Riemann sum. And then from 7 to 10, that last rectangle is 3 wide and 24.9 high. Now we can clearly see that our approximation is going to be more than the distance traveled. Okay, you don't have to draw this picture if you understand what to do with the, the, the values in the table. Um, it just is a real big help here, I think, a, a good strategy for helping you understand the setup down here. So the width of the first rectangle is 2, with the height of 6.8, plus the height of the next rectangle is 3, with the height of 7.4, it's on the right side of these two inputs, plus 2 wide, times 15.6 high plus 3 wide times 24.9. After performing the calculations, you end up with 141.7 and the unit of measure is centimeters. For part B, particle B moves along the same line Okay, but this time we have information about particle B's acceleration, as indicated by these, measure, uh, these units. It tells us that t equals 1 second, the velocity of particle B is 13 centimeters per second. So right there, that's your initial condition. The velocity at 1 second is equal to 13 centimeters per second. Okay, which particle is traveling faster at time equals 5 seconds? Explain your answer. If I look back up here in the table, I can tell you that particle A at time equals 5 has a velocity of 7.4 centimeters per second. So our objective over here is to find the velocity of particle B at 5 seconds. So we're given one point, asked to find the value of another point. We also have the, the derivative. Um, of velocity, 
So we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's look at the setup. So the velocity at 5 is going to be equal to the velocity that was occurring at 1, which will be 13 centimeters per second, plus any changes to the velocity in the time frame from these input values 1 to 5. And we get the change in velocity from integrating the acceleration. antiderivative here, t squared minus 7t evaluated from 1 to 5. Maybe that was a minus. Evaluate at 5, so 25 minus 35. Evaluate both terms at 1, 1 minus 7. Okay, now I'll replace v sub 1 with the value 13. I just didn't want to get it confused with what else was going on up here. So 13 plus negative 10 minus negative 6. Thirteen minus four. So, and all the way down here, I could have put the subscript b to indicate that we're finding the velocity of particle b. Okay, and I know it's going to be centimeters per second. So now I can come over here and just state my answer. My explanation is covered in all this work. And you've clearly indicated the velocity that you've chosen for particle A and all the work that supports the velocity of our particle B. Okay, so this would be totally acceptable for all points.